So these, those three sites I pointed to have been put on a list and they were sent, I put them on a list, I did this, and I sent them to everybody on the Energy Commission's website. The Energy Commission's in charge of building power plants in California over 50 megawatts. I looked at their list, and anybody who had successfully built a plant in the last four years, I emailed them this information for these three sites and one the city owns. These are private property owners, so I had to go talk to them and make sure they were willing and interested. They all said that they were. They're not in redevelopment areas. Um, these three are in a redevelopment area. And one of the things the city would offer, and in particular to the company that owns and operates the Main Street plant, was we said, we will do our best to make you a sweetheart. I said this. Um, we'll do our best to make you a sweetheart deal that if you build something there, you know, we'll help you with redevelopment money to offset the cost. Because there's no gas and electricity. It would cost $12 million more to build a plant there than it would at the MMC site. So the, the redevelopment agency could put some money in to help lower that cost. Maybe. 40%, not 50%. And the income then will go to redevelopment. The income for tax increment, not for the sale of natural gas. <laughs> the way the city makes money on a power plant is the more expensive the plant is, therefore the bigger the plant is, the more the tax, property taxes. If it's a regular area, the property tax is split up between the state and the schools and all that stuff like any other part. If it's in a redevelopment area, we keep a little bigger chunk that the state would get and we reinvest in that redevelopment area. In this case, we would try to give some of it back to the developer to pay part of the cost, uh, and the council hasn't approved that yet, but we pay part of the cost of putting in things like water lines and transmission and gas lines to get them to build it only if they promise to take the MMC plant down. So let me finish this real quickly. That red line is a red line that shows 1,000 feet from residents and sensitive receptors. This property right here is about 16, about 1,700 feet from this house, the closest house. This is 1,000 feet. And then these properties are about 2,800 feet from those children's homes. There are some San Diego homes in here that are only about 1,300 feet away from these properties. But those houses in San Diego are still outside the 1,000-foot buffer required by the general plan. There was a question. Yes, sir. Is, is there some criteria that says uh, that, that it's okay now? In other words, who knows what it will be 50 years from now. They might be wanting to tear down what's done today, put up by the idiots that decided to do it then, and they'll we'll be having the same discussion 50 years from now. What's the criteria that determines 1,000 feet or 1,500 feet is, is adequate? Uh, so you don't get an inversion layer that holds that, that emission down from the plant, whatever it is, whether it's natural gas or what. Yeah. Well, um, the 1,000-foot buffer was developed by the stakeholders in the city's general plan uh, um, process, and I think that they thought that that was at least a acceptable minimum. The concept is that the, these, when they build these power plants, they create dispersion models. And the height of those smokestacks and the location of the plant determines where these harmful things, like PM 2.5, one of the most harmful ones, where it hits the ground. And when you're 1,000 feet away, the perception is that it's better. The reality of it is, is that it goes up into the atmosphere and it floats off with the prevailing winds. But you know the aesthetics, the, the um, local, uh, um, uh, any local emissions that might hit, the sound and those kind of things, those are all more localized. So it isn't a perfect science. And yeah. we make mistakes all the time. Do you have something yeah. to say? I want to answer that because I had a lot of people who were involved in that. I mean, I think for certain size power plants, it's not adequate. But that was what we could get secured in the general plan. I think 1,500 feet would have been better, would not have been ever adopted. A thousand feet, but, we, but at least we can protect communities from being hopefully 1,000 feet away from a power plant. I think if it's just a peaker <coughs> for under 50 megawatts, or 100 megawatts, you know, hopefully you've done, you know, something to keep um, set, you know, residences that far away. If it was a big baseload plant, definitely 1,000 feet would not be enough. But the 1,000 feet also was, was freeways, too. We wanted 1,500. 500. No, no, that was the second one. Well, let me, so let me just also say, uh, let me also say that, you know, without, without quality science and without tests that prove it, and we don't want to use ourselves as guinea pigs, but without proper science, we don't know what that right number is. But what we do know, it doesn't make it right, but what we do know is there's really no place in the city of Chula Vista. These are the three best places. There is not transmission and there is not gas, the things that, that they look for, because ultimately the PUC and the SDG and say, how expensive is it? This is going to add $12 million to the cost of a power plant there. 
So they would be more likely to go someplace else. That might be what we want. But if you want them to get rid of South Bay earlier, you want them to get rid of Main Street earlier, you have to provide an incentive. If we eliminate, if we were to go to 1,500 feet, um, it would probably work for the IP site in the triangle. It would work for the two lower ones for Chula Vista, but it wouldn't work for San Diego. So it would eliminate those two sites. Then we'd be down to one site privately owned and one site publicly owned that I'm going to show you in a minute. Yes, ma'am. Um, the one that's open in Mesa next to the prison, can that not be larger to take care of this problem? And you just mentioned because that would be privately owned. So by private, you're not getting a certain amount of income? Yes, it can be. And, Do you, the, and the goal is let's replace because we need income because one is making a million. That, that's, that's, not, that's not, a, in my opinion, it's not a good reason. I just told you to daylight you and tell you the whole truth that it's one additional potential benefit. But as an example, when you build power plants, you know, the SDG wants to build the Sunrise power plant because they want to put all of the renewables, they say, in the desert. So they're going to spend $2 billion and put transmission lines through neighborhoods that people don't want it. The Otay Metro Loop that cuts diagonally through Chula Vista, those 64 new towers that you saw go up two years ago, that was for the Calpine Power Plant according to the PUC and SDG&E. So if we make it bigger, they're going to fill the other side of that arm that's going to cut right by, it goes by three or four uh, um, uh, um, uh, trailer parks at 2nd and Orange and another couple at Anita and 4th. Mobile home parks. Yeah, mobile home parks. Um, uh, so they... <laughs> I lived in a trailer park when I was a kid, so we, it was a trailer park. I'm sorry. This whole generation thinks of it as trailer park. Yeah. But no, no. There's a difference between a trailer park. My first, my first home was a trailer park, so I apologize. But my mistake. But anyway, what I was going to say is that so it, it, today in the paradigm, and I think we should argue against the paradigm. But the paradigm, when you talk to all the people in charge at the CDC and the PUC and SDGD, is it's either transmission far away or in your local neighborhood, it's power, and we have to. The, the conservation and the renewables are part of what the real long-term fight of that is. But these facilities um, show you what's available. They also have another rule called local capacity requirement. You have to have something local where all the load is, they claim. It's like, take up too much time. So that's actually the last slide. Um, there's something missing here, and I'm going to hand this out. Um, I don't know why, but we have a site. Can you go back to the tool, just the, the whole city map? Yeah, right there. Out here, there is a site. Those first three sites I showed you are all industrial, precise plan sites. Out here, this is all preserved. There are houses that come down about right in here, and when they're finished, they're at 5,800 feet away. When they're finished, they'll be at about 2,800, 2,000 feet away, so they'll still be far away. And then the university is out here, but all of this land around it is currently preserved. It's open space land. So it's not zoned industrial. The city would have to change it. But the city has the right to take some acres for public uses like roads and transmission. The spot that we're talking about, and it's, it's in here, um, the spot that we're talking about is tucked away at the very far edge. Remember that all the wind patterns, except during Santa Ana's, always go east. It would be, in my opinion, the least disruptive. It's completely surrounded by existing transmission. And, and so that property is already degraded by roads to service the transmission and by the transmission corridor from an aesthetic standpoint. So um, that is the other site. That's the site that's probably most applicable for something larger. Um, what, we've, what I told people was that if you want to build something 200 megawatts or smaller, look at Main Street. If you want to build something 200 to 400 megawatts, because that's what SDG asked for, then look at the site in the east. We would not, in my opinion, recommend or support the process in the Main Street area if it didn't help get rid of the existing Main Street plant. We would not support the process in the East if it didn't guarantee that South Bay went away. Um, everybody in the county is going to be proposing sites. What we did is to tell the public that the, the private sector that does this work and does it professionally and successfully, remember the 20 plus companies on the list by the Energy Commission that have successfully done it last four years, we told them, here's some sites that are available, talk to these people, they've given us permission, we'll talk to you about our site, what can we do to help make sure South Bay goes away, to try to, in combination, make sure that we have an alternative for Main Street if that owner is willing, and we've talked to them directly and shown them those sites and potentially replace some of the income from the city if those things happen first.